Here we've got a simple circuit, power supply and a single bulb. Uh, and normally, uh, if we wanted to control that, we'd put in a, a switch. And so let's put a switch in. Here we can see that the switch has broken the circuit and I can close the switch, which is going to make the circuit. So that's fine. What would happen if I put the switch in parallel to the bulb? If I push the switch, will I break the circuit? No, there'll still be a complete path. However, if I push the switch, the bulb goes off. How does that happen? How can making this connection in parallel seem to break our circuit? Well, it doesn't break our circuit, but what it does is it gives a second path for the current to pass through, a parallel route. Now, we've seen before in parallel uh, circuits, if I add extra bulbs in parallel, it doesn't change the total brightness of the circuit. But here, if I'm adding a parallel branch, it definitely does change the brightness. And that's because this route has what we call zero resistance. It's just a wire, so no energy is really being changed from electrical into light at this point. And electrical energy, the current will really flow the easiest path it can get. So this is really bypassing the bulb. So here seems to be a separate, a second way of, of controlling a bulb. Is it a good way? No. The problem is there's still a current flowing. The batteries will still be drained. And in fact, the current that's flowing, well, it's interesting to see. What we'll do is we'll measure the current with an ammeter. So we're gonna put an ammeter into our circuit. And we can see there that normally the current is about 0.28 amps. Really, if I want a bulb to turn off, I want the current to drop down to zero. If I break the circuit, we can see the current goes down to zero. If I push the switch in this case, my current goes off the scale. It goes up way too high. In fact, this ammeter cannot read it. I wonder if we use a different sort of ammeter, can we find out what current is actually flowing? We need a longer wire. This is a different sort of ammeter. We can see normally we're getting about 0.23 amps. If I close the switch, six amps, which is a very high current. Now in this case, not much is happening, but high currents do cause wires to heat up. In this case, these sort of batteries, the regular sort of batteries that you get at home, can't sustain a very high current for a long time, but some batteries can. Some batteries, if I did this, uh, the battery could go on fire or a wire could melt. It would be very dangerous. People have been burnt by holding batteries in their pockets and having a set of keys that have contacted across the terminals and creating what we call a short circuit, which shoots the current way up and can heat a wire up. So as I said, this is known as a short circuit. Really, instead of the current flowing through the bulb, it's given a little bridge to get round the bulb, which is an easier route, which allows current to increase dramatically. So that's what's called a short circuit. Now, we would never design a short circuit into a circuit, normally. But where they do occur is if you've got some sort of fault. If you had a loose wire that came into contact with the terminals, it's exactly the same effect. It would cause a wire to heat up, it could burn the wires and cause a lot of damage. So we always want to avoid having a short circuit. 